So I recently relocated back to Maine from, well, Concord, Massachusetts via Santa Barbara. It might not have been the most direct route and it wasn't a GPS glitch, but it certainly has been influenced by a kind of internal metaphoric surveillance system, a beacon if you will. When people, especially my friends from California, ask me why I moved to central Maine, I give them a picture of my beautiful home and my son playing frequently with his cousins and friends and of this river that's just across the park from my home. My life as a television producer is different, I suspect, than many would choose, certainly my friends in New York City and Los Angeles, but it fits the lifestyle I want to create for me and my family. I freelance and carve out niche relationships with small stations and organizations in less busy hubs. I focus on transformational programming, TV for your soul. I often bring my son with me to work, which is another oddity perhaps, but it's part of the lifestyle that we have when we travel or when we are at home. One thing you learn quickly is to make good connections. <laughs> Appreciating compatibilities with those in your industry, compatible creative styles, as well as compatible visions for the kinds of content you want to create, these are essential creating relationships that last beyond a single project, friendships built. Part of the work I do is help producers develop shows and help regional communities develop public access television stations. In Massachusetts, because of progressive legislation, almost every town or region has a public access station. And guess what? Part of their mission is to provide training to residents who want to learn mostly for free how to do television production. This is a glimpse at some of the television producers and station managers throughout Maine, including Sebastocook Valley and even here in Waterville. What's become increasingly prevalent in our country because people don't understand the ramifications or even how a peg station operates is that they don't produce as much shows as they could and sometimes they close. The FCC created PEG Access Television, the Federal Communications Commission, 50 years ago almost, as an alternative system for televisions in a direct response for the disenchantment people felt for commercial broadcasting. The express goal was freedom of speech. And certainly now we live in a time when we cannot always trust the media. We surf from channel to channel, most of the time landing on a commercial, and finding local content is even more rare. PEG stations are dedicated to local content. Hmm. And here's the thing, you're already paying for a PEG station whether or not your local town, city, or region operates one. Your cable bill each year, the cable providers give your town a sizable check to go towards the operation of a television station, whether or not they choose to operate it. I found out about PEG by accident. My background is PBS, and when I moved to Boston and pitched some shows to the local affiliate, they didn't have time to do what I to, to look at my shows. So synchronistically, as I was looking elsewhere, I found a local ad for Lex Media in that last clip, and I took a tour, and I fell in love with the crew and their mission, and they loved my, sh my ideas. I also learned quickly that I had a lot to learn. I was usually behind the scenes or in front of the camera. I was the person getting the money for the show, not learning how to do the editing and the directing. As Lex Media, the peg station taught me everything from lighting a set to operating the cameras. And I can tell you, the economic development benefits are well worth every single town, city, and region's time and efforts to ensure that such a community exists in their community, such a station exists in their community. This is a picture of a concert that we hosted in Concord. It was live, studio audience, um, whether you're having a concert, a panel series, one-on-one -on -one interview, theater production, set in studio or on location. The longevity-based benefits to publicity, PR, and marketing, and your revenue streams multiply plentyfold if you film it. This is a clip, this is a poster from an event that my colleagues and I, <laughs> I'm competing with motorcycles. <laughs> so we, 
We hosted this event, 15 speakers. We planned it in four weeks, and in the second week, we were sold out of tickets, room for speakers, and we couldn't accept another more sponsor if our bank accounts would have let us, and it probably would have. The philosophy is bring all of your skills together. Do what you love and do it well, and find people to do the other things, the other aspects that they love and do it well. Betty Williams was a dream guest of mine. Another philosophy is ask for what you want. She's a Nobel laureate from Belfast, Northern Ireland. And I got to interview her at the Global Film, excuse me, the Global Peace Film Festival in Florida. She was impeccable. Another cool guest was NBA All-Star Vince Carter. At that time, I had been about six years into learning visualization techniques, and I was delighted to find out that Vince also had visualization techniques he used. He used to sign every sneaker that he got, envisioning it was his signature shoe, which in the NBA world is a huge thing. An important thing to remember is to have a great support system because sometimes you're going to be fantastic and succeed and you're going to want cheerleaders and sometimes you are going to fail and you are going to want cheerleaders. <laughs> sometimes you just need someone to push you in the right direction, even just a nudge. And love. Do what you love. I've been able to create, I've lost my page, I've been able to create a life that I love in a town that I love, and I encourage all of you to follow your dreams. <laughs>